Hey, this is Chris with Criss Cross Crafts. Everybody's a feed and speed rate chip load expert, right? Exactly, you're not. Um, I'm not either. And with a new machine, you never want to just trust what the manufacturers say, even though we know Amana is, is very accurate and very good product. Um, those, those specs are for those much higher rated machines. So I want to dial something in, so we're going to do a little test. You want to know what I did to create this? Watch the video and find out because it might help you figure out what's the best feed and speed and chip load for your particular machine and bit. I have the evidence to prove my theory, do you?
All right, well, that was a fun and time-consuming project. So as I ran each of those passes, I did several V-bit passes, 60-degree V-bit, and several quarter-inch end mill, down-cut bits. And I did that test because I wanted to see what feed rates, what RPM, what chip loads were going to be good for my machine. Uh, obviously, the chip loads that are given out by the manufacturers, a MANA, uh, specifically is the one I'm using here, those are very high chip loads. So those are for machines that are very industrial, very commercial, where you can achieve, you know, four or five, six hundred inches a minute or even a thousand inches a minute. Um, these lower, what's known as entry level machines, like the Axiom or the Shark, um, they're, they're going to be pushing upwards of a hundred inches a minute, 125. The smaller units like the Piranha, the, the X-Car, the Shipoko, those are way lower in regards to the feeds and speeds. So you got to find that optimal feed rate, RPM, and chip load for your specific machine. So this was a test to do a number of things. One, it was a test so I could hear the difference at different feeds and speeds. It was also a test that I could see the difference between each of the feeds and speeds. Because when you hear about chip load, this is what they're talking about. The chip load is the size of the chip generated by the specific bit, or flute rather, uh, at a specific RPM and feed rate. Well, and as you can see, these are drastically different at each of those settings. So, I learned a lot both visually as well as audibly, and I hope you can hear the results in the, uh, in the video, um, because that tells you a lot about different settings. So when you run these and you do a similar test on your machine, see what sounds you're hearing and you can hear the sound of chatter you can hear the loud sounds of the shrill uh, maybe because you're going too fast of an rpm for the feed rate that you've given it or you hear the chatter when you're going too slow so do a similar test on your machine see how you you react with your setup and uh, you can see the measurable difference like i did here and it took a little bit of time to clean up after each individual pass, but it was worth it because now I have not only the audio in my head to know about what feeds and speeds work well for at least the V-bit in the quarter inch end mill, but now I have a visual corresponding piece to, sh to show along with that. So it was a great test for me for my Shark HD5 and, uh, you know, might be worth trying something similar with yours. Uh, but that worked great, and uh, now that I kind of have an idea, I can start running some different toolpaths and start some other projects because that was what was holding me up from really going crazy with this machine is I wanted to dial those in and know those specs before I run them. So anyway, uh, this is Chris with Criss Cross Crafts. Might have been a boring test for you, uh, but it was an informative test for me. Till next time.